All right, I'm back. Um, excuse the lighting. I don't know what's going on here. My setup is, uh, I guess, convenient for the moment. Things are going on at the XDN compound. But um, and hopefully my mic, my mic should be good. I have like a high quality mic, but for some reason, when I record like this, it sounds muffled on the playback. I don't know why. Hit the like button. Share this video. You know, some fool, I just did a video. I don't know if, if it was on Edge being an idiot, but some fool said, um, when you say like the video, like, why do you say like the video in the beginning of the video? <sighs> Bret Hart. Bret the Hitman Hart. Oh, look at him. You know, there was some story about Stu Hart in his older years when he was shaking like Muhammad Ali. And uh, something about like Stu Hart was making chicken tenders. And then he picked up the chicken tenders with a kitty litter. And then it was some gross story. Uh, allegedly it's true. But then like I think uh, Natalia or... or one of the hearts denied it, but I don't know. Stu Hart. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, and uh, whatever. But, um, this, oh, God, Stu Hart. He's dead, right? All right. Anyway, so, uh, Brett the Hitman Hart. This video is about him and Goldberg. Brett Hart and Bill Goldberg. The never ending feud, the never ending conflict. Now, for the most of it, for the most of this, rather, the never ending part was mostly on Bret Hart's behalf. Bret Hart is someone who's very bitter. I have a video on this channel and I believe it's titled, Is Bret Hart a Legend or a Bitter Old Man? Or both. Both. And um, I just made a video on Rhino and I mentioned in the video there was a point of Rhino's career where he may have he may have come off as being bitter in certain interviews. And I made the point that a lot of people on this internet, the comments, these people, they love to leave a comment of, oh, this wrestler sounds bitter when they did their book, or they sound bitter in their RF shoot interview in 2007 after they got released. Well, yeah, because things in life make you bitter. That's why they sound that way. Like people, people on the internet, they have like this weird thing. And this, I said it before, this is how you can tell most people never lived a life because most people on the internet, they have this internet mindset of, uh, uh, you, you're not supposed to act bitter. You're not supposed to rant. You're not supposed to get mad. Just, just somehow nothing in life should ever bother you. These, these are the people who live and live. They're living like an incel. Now, sometimes being bitter, it is. You know, it, it's something that was done against you and you're right. But then there's a thing of, OK, you're going on and on and on and on. And Bret Hart has been going on and on and on to this day about Montreal and Shawn Michaels and Goldberg. And when you get to the Shawn Michaels, it's real. It's kind of odd how he still will get a little emotional in interviews about the screw job in Montreal when he shook Shawn Michaels hand on TV. They made up backstage in real life. They shot, you know, a, a, a rival's DVD together. They've been seen together in photos, but yet Bret Hart will still, you could just see it. It, it. Like it still bothers him. I think Nash was saying this on the podcast. On his podcast, but Nash is another one. Nash is one of these people, oh, uh, you know, uh, how could you get bitter? Uh, you know, he, he's another one of these people, but of course, because Nash, he had a he had a sweet career because he was the one making people bitter and miserable. So of course, he doesn't relate to that. But Bret Hart, you know, he he'll still he he still does rants about Eric Bischoff. Okay, Bischoff did not book you properly in 1998. I think you still got paid a lot. I think you're still viewed as a legend. But he, he'll still go on. And one of the things he still goes on and on and on about is Bill Goldberg injuring him. Now, I will say the Bill Goldberg injury did put an end to his career pretty much. But. It's an accident. It's a mistake. The screw job was on purpose. 
But still, you should not be going on about it 20, 25, 30 years, 50,000 years later. Goldberg was an accident. A horrible accident, yes. But the thing about Bret Hart, and, you know, I, I said this before, there's something about Canadian wrestlers. Canadian wrestlers are so narcissistic. They're so into themselves. Chris Jericho, Edge. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I've seen stories of people saying Tess was kind of like that too. But Tess was kind of like more in like a, like a high school arrogant jock way where it was kind of funny. But a lot of these, I don't know what it is about Canadian wrestlers. A lot of them are egomaniacs. You know, even with Cornette, he always said how Owens and, and uh, El Generico, they never wanted to listen to him because they think everything is right their way. And all. Bret Hart is one of these people as well. Was he great? Yeah. But he still exhibits egotism and, and all that type of nonsense. You know, Scott Hall had interviews saying he went to Bret Hart's house in the 90s and Bret had a room and the room was all his memorabilia and posters and all this stuff. Now, that might have just been a lot of fans sent him things and he kept it in a room. But Scott Hall, he described it as basically Bret Hart made a shrine to himself. Even when Bret Hart talks about Montreal, you know, he talks about, well, I wouldn't lose in Canada. It's like that is the that, I think that is the number one biggest mark statement in the history of wrestling. Well, you know, Bret Hart, I'm, I'm a Canadian hero, so I would never lose in my own country. Like, what are you talking about? Once again, this is one of my favorite websites, you know, um, Online World of Wrestling. The original version was called Obsessed with Wrestling, a very marked title. But this site is great for, it has like pretty much almost every match result. You know, you look here and, you know, Bret Hart's career in eight September 87, you know, what he did on Superstars. And then the next week on Wrestling Challenge. This is a great site for the history of wrestling. If you want to know, like, if you want to see old photos and results of people's careers. It has like every wrestler ever on here, their whole career pretty much. Every single match, I mean at, at least like television match and pay-per-view. And um but you know Bret Hart, he's always been like a mark for himself. Um but the Goldberg thing at Starcade 99 was an accident. Hit the like button, share this video, subscribe to this channel. It was an accident. Goldberg apologized profusely. Goldberg for this whole time, he was never, you know, he, he was always like a gentleman with it. And he even felt worse every time Goldberg saw a new interview where Bret Hart is, you know, basically shaming him. Goldberg always felt bad about it. But now Goldberg recently does an interview and he's tired of it because Bret Hart is someone. Bret, Bret Hart is one of these people. If you do something to him, you, you broke the law and it's the worst thing ever. But he can just go on and on and on and on about you. Bret Hart is one of these people. And I say this because he exhibits this. He's one of the, he's one of these people. He can never let nothing go. Even when he lets it go, it's not all the way gone. That's why he's still carrying Montreal around. It's ridiculous. The Goldberg accident is that's just what it is. Now, Goldberg was someone who, right after Bret Hart had that accident, you know, they, they tried to do the whole, like, reforming the NWO 2000, that disaster, and then Goldberg, he ended up shattering his whole forearm or his whole hand or whatever when he he uh, he hit the glass or the limo, but he, he was supposed to use a bat, but he used his hand because I think he dropped the, the he was supposed to use, like, a, a wrench or some, a pipe, but he, I think he dropped it or threw it, so... They're on live TV, so he had to break the glass with his hand. He was trying to save the segment, and then he ended up destroying his arm, and he was out for, like, six months. But, uh, you know, WCW, it was just so in the grave at that point. But um, this is just, like, a never-ending feud. And then you have to understand, you know, I mentioned that whole Canadian clique. You know, Lance Storm and, and, and Jericho... You know, they have their little things against Goldberg, and I'm sure the whole they love Brett, so that added on to it. Because wrestling, like many things, is just one big-ass high school. A bunch of men in tights arguing over things that don't have any real meaning. I would love for uh, Tony Khan to bring Goldberg to AW, and Goldberg just spears Jericho, and then he leaves. Hell, he can spear Tony Khan out the uh, out the building, too. 
But um, th- this is this is something that Bret Hart's been carrying, and and now Goldberg is sick of it. And you know, he did an interview saying that he just did an interview talking about you know there were times when he may have stiffed someone in the ring, but it wasn't his intention. And he's talking about how you know people will unfairly judge him because someone like Bret Hart keeps saying he was dangerous in the ring and he was this and he was that. The man was green and it was an accident. And some people are just stiff. Ulti- Pause. <laughs> Lord Vincent, man. Some- Puffy. Some people are just stiff. Ultimate Warrior, what have you. But even Bret Hart, you know, you know, this is like an infamous thing, but, you know, he once complained that Honky Tonk Man wasn't stiff enough. So it's like, <laughs> and then Honky Tonk had the greatest response. He's like, he's like, Brett, you said I wasn't stiff enough. Well, didn't Goldberg kick you in the head? He damn near knocked your dick straight, or some. He said some crazy Southern nonsense. The honky tonk man, <laughs> and a Memphis legend. <laughs> oh my God, the man, the man made a career out of impersonating Elvis. Brilliant, and he's another one. I said this on a video. I forget which one it was, but um. And Honky Tonk Man, this, this is pretty much where I got it from, but it's true. You know, Honky Tonk Man was the first one that I heard. He said, in the WWF, if they make your gear blue or baby blue, that means they don't care about you and they're going to make a joke out of you. And uh, that's pretty much true. They did that to Test when he did the testicles gimmick. They did that to Honky Tonk Man on his way out. All of a sudden, he's always wearing, I mean, he wore blue, but like I think there was like a thing of like, we want you to always wear blue and we want your 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 vest to have more blue. It's like, why do you always why do you always want me to wear blue? And then if you looked out history, if they start burying you, you're probably wearing blue. And if you're wearing blue from the start, that means from the start they're planting a seed to bury you. Eugene, navy blue. If you if if you're someone whose gear is blue, if they made you wear that, that is a red flag. I'm waiting for Cody Rhodes to have an all blue suit, all blue pants. I'm waiting for that. Okay, Batista. You remember when Batista came back? 2014, whatever it was. He was wearing what? All blue. They start calling him Blue Tista. But um, <laughs> if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy this content, donate to the Cash App. Um, it's dollar sign XDN online. Um, check out my latest uploads, my latest wrestling content. Um, the Bret Hart is so ridiculous. He just goes on and on and on and on. And now he also, he's jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, Vince McMahon's a disgusting piece of trash. Great. Now, let's say, let's say six months from now, a year from now, McMahon is found completely innocent. These same people are going to go silent and he'll be back running World Wrestling Entertainment. He'll be back. <laughs> and they're going to act like they never said this. Oh, no, we were working, brother. <laughs> the, the carny nature of this business, of this industry. It doesn't change. Mm -mm. No, it doesn't. Now, a a last point, and this is really a a strong point, I think. To this day, Brett will still go off in ways about Montreal, the Goldberg injury. You know, he'll, he'll go on and on about Shawn Michaels, Eric Bischoff, but how come he doesn't go on and on about Owen Hart's passing? He'll go on and on about him getting kicked in the head or or Shawn Michaels screwed me. If you're going to go on and on about something, wouldn't you do it about your own siblings passing live on pay-per-view in front of an audience? <laughs> no, but Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon pointed that out. When Owen Hart passed afterwards, There was a show on TSN called Off the Record. And McMahon was on the show. And when Owen Hart passed afterwards, he met Bret Hart for the first time since Montreal. And McMahon said when he met Bret Hart, instead of speaking about Owen Hart passing, asking about Owen, Bret kept talking about himself. This is Vince McMahon's words, and I believe him. Because why would McMahon just say that? This was this is the most serious interview, one of the most serious interviews McMahon ever did. Why would he just say that? He wasn't lying about this. McMahon might lie about a lot of other things. But why would he say, when I first met Brett, to speak about Owen Hart, 
He did not mention Owen. He mentioned, how come you screwed me? How come I can't have my pictures and my video from all my matches? This is what Bret Hart did. That's a red flag. That right there is the confirmation of Bret Hart's egotism. He'll go on and on and on about a wrestling finish, but he will not rant and rave about his brother's passing. With that said, I'm up out of here, and that is it.